Hello YouTubers and welcome to the JK Lenses review of the Nikon 28-70 f2.8 AF-S standard zoom lens. From 1999 to 2007 this was Nikon's fast f2.8 professional standard zoom lens and for most of its history was available in the so-called tropical grey finish. As you can see given the size of the zooming in the focus rings this makes the lens look rather like an unwashed zebra. However its mechanics and optics inside are exactly the same as the much more common black version. As always this review is in four sections. First of all we run down the lens's technical specifications and then see how it handles in everyday use. Then we check out its optical performance and look at some possible alternatives which are available. As with all of Nikon's fast f2.8 standard zoom lenses, the idea of this lens is that it will allow you to leave your 28, 35, 50 and possibly 85mm fast prime lenses all at home and just carry this one lens. Starting at the standard 50mm focal length, you can zoom into the very beginnings of telephoto at 70mm and you can also zoom back to the usefully wide 35mm focal length as well as the wide angle 28mm setting. All these focal lengths are available at the fast f2.8 aperture with the lens's front element moving in and out slightly across this zooming range. Focusing is via the lens's silent wave motors driven electronically by the camera's AFS system. The lens can focus down to a distance of about half a metre and is completely internally focusing with the front element neither moving nor rotating throughout the range. Optically the lens is constructed from 15 elements in 11 groups, two of them made from Nikon's extra low dispersion ED glass and one of them being an aspherical element. The lens is a very substantial unit being nearly 90mm in diameter and over 120mm in length. With its large metal body stuffed full of expensive glass it tips the scales around a very noticeable 900 grams. As with many of Nikon's professional lenses it takes 77mm filters. As you probably guessed from the pictures of this lens mounted on a camera body, this is a very large and heavy lens. To be fair, this kind of comes with the territory as all of Nikon's fast f2.8 standard zoom lenses are very sizeable units. When mounted to one of Nikon's professional DSLR bodies like the D3, this lens represents about three quarters the weight of the body, which actually results in a system which is quite well balanced for hand holding. When mounted on any smaller camera body though, it is going to result in a fairly front heavy system. All the controls fall nicely to hand, but after a day of hand holding and carrying, it's not a lens you're going to forget about in a hurry. Starting our tour of the lens at the lens mount, we're reminded that this is one of the earlier AFS lenses with its mechanical aperture ring. It also has a tiny switch to allow you to lock it into the minimum aperture position for camera bodies which set the aperture electronically. Next along the lens is the generously sized zooming ring with its firm but positive action. Like many of Nikon's professional zoom lenses, the entire zoom range is packed into about 90 degrees of turn making zooming this lens in and out a speedy business. Although it's easy enough to turn with one finger, it's clear that it's moving quite a few elements inside the lens. This is also clear at the front of the lens where it gains several centimetres in length as you zoom out to the 28mm setting. In actual use however, this is completely hidden by the large and deep lens hood. The control panel of switches on this lens is a very simple affair with just a single switch to select between AFS and manual focusing. When the switch is in the M position, all autofocus is disengaged and the lens is focused by turning the focusing ring. In the MA position it's focused electronically by the camera through the AFS system which can be instantly overridden just by turning the focusing ring. The focusing ring sits towards the front of the lens and like the zooming ring is a very comfortable thickness to use. Although it can easily be turned with one finger it has enough inertia to ensure that it stays put when necessary. At the front of the lens around the 77mm filter thread is the bayonet mounting for the large HB19 lens hood. Although this substantial lens hood does an excellent job, as you can see from the pictures it makes a thick lens over a centimetre thicker and almost half as long again. As we've said many times before on this channel, all zoom lenses are trying the impossible task of replicating the performance of a bag full of prime lenses and consequently have to make compromises somewhere. The path chosen by Nikon's 28-70 f2.8 lens is to put optical quality right at the top of the design priorities and to pay the price quite literally in terms of size, weight and price tag. If you're looking for a cheap and cheerful pocket sized lens with adequate optical quality then you're clearly watching the wrong video. Having grumbled all the way through the handling section about the size and weight of this lens the payback definitely comes in terms of its near to prime lens optical performance. Images from this lens are impressively sharp particularly for a zoom lens with the only possibility of a criticism being perhaps the very tiniest amount of softness in the very corners and only when the lens is wide open at f2.8. Colours are always rendered very strongly and naturally with this lens and none of the sample images in this review has had any work done after leaving the camera. Levels of resolution are extremely impressive and well beyond the requirements of even the highest megapixel modern DSLR body. The bokeh or the appearance of the outer focus areas of this lens is extremely natural 
Although it can't quite do the dreamy smoothness of prime lenses in this focal length range, it's never distracting, even with quite complex backgrounds. This is encouraging given the lens's relatively high element count and shows some very thoughtful design inside. If you point the lens at brick walls or test charts, then like almost every standard zoom ever made, you can find a very small amount of barrel distortion at the wide end and an equally tiny amount of pincushion distortion at the telephoto end. However, it's clear that an awful lot of effort has gone into keeping these two characteristics of standard zooms to an absolute minimum in this lens. This is one of the reasons why I like this lens and often think it's worth the effort of dragging it around in place of a couple of tiny prime lenses. In shots like this, for example, where the very last thing you'd want would be the slightly curving horizontals at the edges, which you'd get with so many standard zooms. This is why I'd normally try and take shots like this with a prime lens, but the 28-70 has done an excellent job in terms of pretending to be a high quality prime lens. There's more good news in terms of the other areas of this lens's performance. Autofocus speed is fast and confident when mounted on one of Nikon's Pro Standard DSLR bodies, and standards of build quality are arguably the highest amongst all of Nikon's f2.8 standard zooms. If you're after a Nikon f2.8 standard zoom lens, then this list shows you how the 28-70 fits into the various alternatives which are available. In a sense, all the lenses on this list are an example of Nikon providing their special magic for their professional users as they all provide close to prime lens quality across the whole zooming range at f2.8. However, the difference in price between the cheapest and the most expensive lenses on this list is quite substantial, producing some definite peaks and troughs in the value for money spectrum, and these are certainly worth knowing about if you're in the market for this kind of lens. Although the list of features for each of these lenses varies wildly, if we drew a chart of optical quality, then it would be pretty much a straight line across all of them. Providing close to prime lens optical quality across the zoom range at f2.8 is a problem which Nikon had pretty much nailed from around the late 1970s. It would not be true to say that the very latest lenses on this list have hugely better optical quality than the very earliest manual versions, although they obviously boast a much wider range of up-to-date features such as autofocus and vibration reduction. If you can manage without autofocus, then the very earliest manual versions of this lens represent excellent value for money. They were built to a high standard almost entirely out of metal, which means there's an awful lot of them still available at prices which are frankly ridiculous given the optical quality they can produce. Personally, I think the peak of the value for money spectrum in these lenses comes with the AF and the D versions. They maintain the excellent optics and tank-like build quality of the manual lenses at prices which are a small fraction of the modern AF-S 2470s. As we've seen in this review, the 28-70 can provide premiership quality at a very second-rate price and therefore also represents excellent value for money. Before starting this review, I did think for a few moments about presenting it as a comparison between the 28-70 and the two 24-70 lenses. However, that video would have been a bit of a yawn, as all three lenses simply represent slightly different design takes on maintaining close to prime lens optical quality across this zooming range at f2.8. Where one lens is ever so slightly sharper in the centre, another has a slightly flatter field in the corner, and so on. It would have been a bit like watching two extremely closely matched boxers slugging it out over 12 rounds, each one occasionally winning the odd point here or there, but neither able ever to deliver the knockout punch. This makes this end of our list a rather strange place in terms of value for money. If you factor in the eye-watering price of the latest 24-70 AF-S VR lens, then as a potential buyer there's some very hard questions you need to ask this lens, given that the evidence that it offers better optical quality than the 28-70 is pretty much non-existent. As usual at JK Lenses, we've managed to analyse alternative lenses simply in terms of optical quality, and have therefore come up with conclusions with which others may well not agree. As well as optical quality, an equally important factor in choosing between these lenses is the features which they provide. The oldest lenses on this list can only zoom out to 35mm, whereas the very latest lenses can go much wider at 24 As always, you'd need to think about the kind of photographs that you want to take with this lens, but my experience of walking around with a 3570 lens has always been that I can't step back far enough and can't fit in everything that I want to photograph. For many photographers, the 24mm setting will be the USP, and the 2470 lenses will be the only possible choice. Plotting standards of build quality across these lenses, we once again come up with some rather strange results. The last lifetime build quality of the 3570 lenses has been proved across the decades and goes without question. My 28-70 has clearly put up with nearly two decades of not very careful use, has tended to damage the things it bumps into more than itself, and only has a little bit of scratch paint and the occasional squeak to show for all of this. Despite their head-melting price tags, the increased use of plastic in the 24-70 lenses mean that there's definitely no evidence of an increased build quality here. For some photographers, near instantaneous autofocus and features like vibration reduction may be the deal breakers, in which case the expensive 24-70 lenses may start to look like the only option. Although once again, an autofocus speed contest between the 24-70s and the 28-70 would be much too close to call.
Finally, if I can prise your fingers off of the need for a constant f2.8 aperture across the whole zooming range, then Nikon produced some excellent standard zoom lenses with a maximum aperture of round f4. The latest version of the 24-120 f4 lens is clearly Nikon's attempt to make a complete Swiss army knife of a lens. With AFS, VR and almost every code letter that's available, its impressive zoom range means you can leave even more prime lenses at home. If you imagine you're out photographing one day with your standard lens and a couple of large cathedrals jump out at you from behind a bush, and then a couple of seconds later you spot a couple of Hollywood movie stars disappearing into the distance, if that sounds like a typical day for you, then this could be the kind of lens that never leaves your DSLR body. If we rated lenses in terms of their picture getting ability, then this lens would stand head and shoulders above almost everything else in this review. Doing all this at a constant f4 has obviously meant some cutbacks in other areas. Although it's not a particularly large lens, there's a disappointingly large amount of plastic involved for what is quite a pricey lens. And also, if you poke around too closely in the corners of its images, you may find a bit more distortion than some users are prepared to live with. There's a full review of the 24 to 120 elsewhere on this channel, which will give you the full story. Finally, if you're after a fairly fast, high-quality standard zoom and funds are tight, then there are a couple of very reasonable standard zooms from the AF generation, which were obviously designed with a surprisingly high priority placed on optical quality. The 28 to 85 and the 28 to 105 f3.5 to 4.5 AF standard zoom lenses can both be found without spending too much money on the second-hand market, and in most situations will produce images more than comparable with many of the more expensive lenses mentioned in this section. Over the past few years I've very often taken the 28 to 105 lens with me in favour of the 24 to 70 f2.8, simply due to its much smaller size when travelling on two feet or two wheels, and I would honestly struggle to find a single image where I could say this lens's quality has let me down. Once again, the full story is available in this lens's review on this channel. I hope you've enjoyed this review and found something useful in it. If you have any relevant comments, opinions or experiences, then please type them in the box below. And as always, very many thanks for watching.